Hello and welcome to this video on section 22.6 where we are going to talk about activation and clonal selection of lymphocytes. So first let's define what clonal selection is. It's forming clones in response to an antigen. So when we talk about proliferation and increasing the number of the T cells or B cells, we are essentially talking about this clonal selection. And so all of the formed cells are going to have the same T cell receptor or B cell receptor that will match that specific antigen. Remember we said we tailor the immune attack to that specific antigen in our adaptive immunity. And that is why it takes a little bit longer, right? To be able to create all these cells that have the same receptors for that antigen. So then we have, um, our T cells that we discussed have uh, their antigen challenge when they are in those secondary lymphoid structures. An antigen challenge is that first encounter between the antigen and lymphocyte. Like I said, it's in the secondary lymphoid structures and the antigen in our blood was brought over to the spleen or if we have an antigen that was able to penetrate the skin it is taken over to a lymph node and if we were to encounter an antigen within our respiratory GI or urogenital tracts or in our tonsils or malt mucosa associated lymphoid tissue the T cells would encounter them just within those areas. So let's talk about how the activation process takes place when we have antigen challenge. So we have our helper T cell here as our first example. Our first signal is when we have that direct contact between the MHC molecule of the antigen presenting cell. So we see this visualized over here. The antigen presenting cell took up that antigen, displayed it on their MHC molecule, and this is our helper T cell here. At this point, it is naive until we have it combined with this antigen. The other thing that has to happen is we have an interaction with our CD4 protein here as well. So notice that that's taking place at the same time. If our naive helper T cell doesn't recognize this antigen, then it is going to quickly disengage from it. However, if it does recognize that antigen, it's going to keep that contact for several hours and we will get into the second signal. So we have other receptors of our antigen presenting cell and our T cell that are going to interact. The T cell itself will start secreting a interleukin two chemical that stimulates itself and then will cause the T cell to proliferate forming clones of itself. So helper T cells with that same T cell receptor that recognizes this antigen. The other thing we're going to do is have these helper T cells that were cloned release more interleukin-2 to signal it, itself and also other cells. And then we will create some memory helper T cells for future encounters with the same antigen so that if we do get reinfected with the same antigen, we can create this army of helper T cells much more rapidly the second time around. And if we do not get this second signal, the helper T cells will become our regulatory T cells instead and inhibit an immune response. Now let's talk about how we activate our cytotoxic T cells. So first we have direct contact with our naive cytotoxic T cell and its T cell receptor with the antigen, the peptide fragment of an MHC class one molecule on our antigen presenting cell or an infected cell. The infected cell would have to be a nucleated cell to have that MHC molecule. I just realized I spelled MHC incorrect here, so I'll correct that in um, your PowerPoint. Anyway, the interaction then is going to be stabilized with this CD8 protein. So that's that first signal that we get. The second signal involves other receptors interacting 
and secretion of IL-2 from the helper T cell that we saw in the previous slide coming over and stimulating the cytotoxic T cell to proliferate and clone itself. So once again, we will get a ton of these cytotoxic T cells all with the same T cell receptor for that specific antigen becoming active and will also create some memory cytotoxic T cells so that we can quickly activate them if we were to be re-exposed to the same antigen. All right, now we are going to talk about our B cells becoming activated. They can respond to the antigens by eventually creating antibodies through um, becoming activated. So let's talk about the first signal. This is gonna take place when we have our intact antigen binding to the B cell receptor. And this is called cross-linking when we have two B cell receptors attached to that antigen. So you could see another one taking place over here. And so our stimulated B cell is going to want to engulf and process and present that antigen. Remember that this is one of our APCs as well. So now for our second signal, it will take place between our B cell and the previously activated T cell. So this was our helper T cell that was already activated from the previous slides. Now our helper T cell is going to release an interleukin-4 that stimulates our B cell. Now I have some of the verbiage written for this on the next slide, but I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with this visual just so you can see it. So now that this B cell has been stimulated from interleukin-4, it is going to cause them to proliferate and differentiate. So most of the B cells are going to differentiate into these plasma cells that are now gonna create antibodies that are specific to the antigen that it ingested in here. And the remainder of our B cells are going to become memory B cells. They will be able to retain their B cell receptors and if we were to come into contact with that same antigen, they are going to be able to uh, clone themselves very quickly and be able to produce plasma cells to get those antibodies secreted to combat the antigen. And these memory cells have a longer lifespan than the plasma cells. So in some cases, activation without T cells can take place, but the production of the memory B cells and certain antibodies will require helper T cells involvement in order to truly be activated. Now let's talk about lymphocyte recirculation. After some time, a lymphocyte is gonna exit the secondary lymphatic structure and circulate through our blood and lymph for a couple of days. The different lymphocytes will be delivered to the secondary lymph lymphatic structures, and hopefully that lymphocyte will encounter a specific antigen if needed to trigger the immune response.